You are watching TFI. So what happened was I broke my HTC Vive. And then I thought, you know, I need it. I need VR in my life. I need to replace it. So I bought the Rift S, placed an order for that. And then three hours later, I fixed the Vive. And I'm left with this. But it's fine. It comes off the back of a couple of months ago. I did a Vive versus Rift comparison, not knowing at the time that Oculus had imminent plans to end production of the original Rift and replace it with the Rift S. So it's been an unusual couple of months. I've now got the original Vive, original Rift, and now a Rift S and an index on order as well. Uh, one head, four headsets, never mind. We're going to take a look at the Rift S, talk about the specs. I uh, haven't actually opened this yet, uh, let alone used it. So I'll talk about how I feel its uh, its usability is and its quality a little bit later on. I don't want to just do a review video having used it for an hour. That's not how I do things. I like to have good good use time with them. So let's get this box opened. And there we are, the inside of the Rift S. Packaging. I'm not here to talk about packaging, to be fair like, but I do enjoy good unboxing. I must admit, I like the new product experience and it's not quite what it used to be, mate. When I bought the, the HTC Vive on day one, the packaging was absolutely incredible. I then bought another HTC Vive about two weeks ago, and they've significantly skimped back on the packaging, and I suspect Oculus have done too. Very minimal on the inside, although it does look fresh and crispy. Uh, you can tell it's, it's, it's a little bit on the cheap side, but I can forgive that, I can forgive that. So we've got the new touch controllers. You get these with the Oculus Quest as well as these, this Rift S. So the Quest is going to be the more popular VR device because it doesn't require a high-powered gaming PC. It's wireless. That's going to be more appealing to most people. However, I, I don't play games on my YouTube channel, so I'm going to be using this with professional applications that are going to require processing to be done with the PC, which is why the Rift S is a must-have for me. So these new touch controllers... Uh, they're almost identical to the original touch controllers, but you've got the, the tracker loop on the other side. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. And this is a bit of an unpopular opinion from what I've seen and read, but I actually prefer the Vive controllers. found that for myself and for people that I've let have a go on my Rift. Uh, it's difficult to understand when you've got the VR headset on which controller you've got in which hand. And um, you have to try regularly swap them over between hands, which is quite clumsy to do in VR. And also, it's very easy to accidentally press this thumb button here when you're in VR, especially Beat Saber when you're swinging them around. It's you find yourself clipping this button on a regular basis, which is quite frustrating. But uh, they're lighter, arguably more ergonomic. Although again, new starters to VR do struggle big time to find. You know, press the pre press the X button. Which button's the X button? It's like, press the trigger. Well, which one's the trigger? So yeah, anyway, they, they are, they're, they're fine, they're fine. Uh, they do require uh, AA batteries, but that's, so it's either AA or AAA batteries. I, I'm not sure, but they do require external batteries. So you get two of those. The headset itself, here it is in all its uh, magnificence. So we've got a new design with the Oculus Rift S. It's still tethered, you can see the cable there. Uh, but this was designed in partnership with Lenovo, who've also done their own headset called the Mirage Solo, which was... I haven't seen it personally. I've seen pictures of it, and it's absolutely horrendous looking. Uh, how it performs, I don't know, but uh, it's yeah done in partnership with the Lenovo. It's even got the uh, the Lenovo. You can see the logo there on the side. Uh, we've got this new Halo style headband as well, which is uh, I've uh, brand new. You can see I haven't even used it yet. I'm going to reserve comfort opinions and whatnot until later on after I've had a good good go of it for quite some time. But I can see this being more comfortable than the original Rift and the Vive. Uh, it feels like it's got more padding uh, on the Halo. Uh, the Halo is also detachable. So you c I'm not going to do it right now because I don't want to accidentally break something before I actually get a chance to use it. But it detaches around here, which should potentially let Oculus develop and deliver better audio solution, which is something that this headset has been criticized for quite heavily. Uh, instead of having headphones, which as you can see, there are none, it has uh, an audio solution built into the band, which is, uh, it's not like a driver speaker type system. That's something which a lot of people have complained about with this headset and said the audio is absolutely inadequate on all levels. So that's uh, something that Oculus have also said they're going to try and improve through software, but I've got a feeling it is going to require 
uh, a new headband for a decent audio solution which is a shame because it's a step backwards and nobody likes taking a step backwards with products uh, and this ref this rift s headset uses inside out tracking as well so with the htc5 we have the lighthouse units which are mounted inside uh, inside of the room space that you're using in vr and these lighthouse track boxes track the movement of the headset and the controllers whereas on the uh, the rift s this inside out tracking uses these cameras on the top and on the side here and on the front to uh, to map out the space that you're in and then it tracks the movement of the headset and the controllers using these cameras which is not going to be as accurate as having external trackers but it's less equipment it's less uh, power sockets it's less usb ports for, in use from the original rift which used two ir camera style trackers it remains to be seen whether that's going to be a problem or not but i wouldn't have thought so so on to the display one of the most important parts of any vr uh, the rift s has a, a different display layout to most of the other mainstream vr headsets uh, which had an oled display per eye this has an else a single lcd display behind the lenses uh, which changes the resolution from uh, 1080 by 1200 up to 1280 by 1440 pixels per eye. Uh, so it's a slightly lower resolution than the Oculus Quest. It's a higher resolution than the original Rift and Vive devices, but instead of it being OLED, it uses LCD, which is what they say. They say it's got more sub pixels, uh, which increases the the perception of resolution rather uh, over and above the OLED display. So uh, again, I'll check that out once i get this in use and also the uh, the display refresh rate is dropped from 90 hertz down to 80 hertz so we do it does feel like we're having quite a bit of regression in this device but 90 down to 80 hertz may not be perceptible all too much and it does mean that it requires a little less computational power uh, to pump images into the headset meaning that you could maybe increase super sampling a little bit higher and just not notice that refresh rate too much hopefully and because we've got a single lcd display behind those two lenses it's not possible to adjust the ipd the distance between the lenses either so there's no slider here it's a fixed ipd and i think it's changeable in software uh, which is never going to be as good as physical ipd changes so on the original rift and vive you've got a like or on the rift you've got you've got a slider which changes the distance between the lenses and on the vive there's a turning knob here which again brings the lenses in and out uh, to suit the distance between different people's eyes for focusing. So we've got a five meter cable as per normal. And on the end of the cable, we have simply just a display port and a USB port. So we've got a single USB port as opposed to most of the other solutions, which requires an entire rack of USB ports on your PC, which is uh, most welcome. E simpler connectivity. For, uh, for, for people who aren't really enthusiasts and have a stack of USB ports free. And we've got an Oculus box here, which uh, no doubt contains various manuals uh, and a display port to a mini display port adapter. I assume this is quite right. And uh, yeah, we'll get a couple of AA batteries in here as well uh, for, the, for the touch controllers. So there you go, that's the Oculus Rift S. The quality of it feels more premium than the original Rift. It looks more premium than the original Rift. There is a regression in specs in some areas and an improvement in others. So I would have thought the conclusion that we're going to get from this after significant use is that it's an improvement over the original Rift, but probably not enough for someone to upgrade. But it'll be simpler to use for newcomers to VR, I would have thought. So uh, just before I wrap this video up, uh, this, is, this is later on in editing, Neil, here. I've uh, started pulling all the files off the SD card, so I opened up the, the, the Rift and plugged it in and tried it on. And uh, I'm not going to get into a full how does it feel, what's it like uh, review style rant right now, but if, you, if you're interested in another opinion out there uh, on, on the Rift S, then uh, stay tuned for the next video on this. That's uh, that'll be coming soon, because just after five minutes of trying this thing on, I've already got lots to say about it. Uh, some not so good, and some some all right. But yeah, I just thought I'd add that in because it's oh my god. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.